Good morning, grade six. How are you? Today we are going to start with your book, book of grade six. Now I will start with chapter three, relative positions of two lines in the plane. It is from page 24 till page 36. Please, I need you to stay with me. So in this video, we are going to discuss the difference between lines, semi-lines, and segment. I will start with activity A on page 24. Now let's start with the first table, table number one. As you see, I have lines, okay? I have here three different lines, okay? This is the representation. What the meaning of representation? It's what is drawn. The drawing, okay? I mean by representation, the drawing. Notation, what is written, okay? So let's start with the first line. Now, what is the name of the first line? We name it as small d, capital D, delta, etc. Okay? I put, I name it as one letter. I put it between two parentheses. Now, why parentheses? Miss, if you want to measure this line, can you measure it? Can I measure this line? No, I can measure it. Measure it. it has no measurement because if you look at the extremity, extremity 1 and extremity 2 of this line, I noted that it is unlimited. It has no limits. I can elongate it as much as I want. So from here, we can't measure this line. Okay? So the first line uh, notated by only one letter, small d, capital D, delta, whatever, I must put it between two parentheses. Also, it has no measurement, okay? So the line, the extremities of the line uh, are unlimited and has no measurement, okay? Now let's move to the second uh, line. As you notice, it has two letters first extremity x the second one is y okay now again can we measure this line no i can't measure this line it has no measurement because the extremity x is unlimited unlimited has no limit and also y is unlimited so when the extremities are unlimited i can't measure uh, this line Okay, I can't measure it, so I call it line. Now, do you understand what the meaning of line? Line uh, has no measurement, and the extremities are unlimited. Now, how I name, what's about the notation of this line? I can uh, name it from the left to the right, x, y, or from the right to the left, y, x. Also, I must put it between two parentheses, because the extremities are unlimited, has no measurement, okay? Now let's move to the third one. As you notice, I have two points, A and B, okay? If I join the point A and B, I will get one line, okay? I, get, I will get one and only one line. Now how I name this uh, line? Also, again, I can start from the left to the right, AB, or from the right to the left, BA. I must put them, these two letters, between two parentheses because the extremities are unlimited. The extremities here has no limits, okay? And also, I can't measure them. I can't measure the line. Now, I have here three kinds or three types of lines. D, X, Y or Y, X, A, B or B, A. These three lines uh, has no, uh, lim extremities are unlimited, okay? Has unlimited extremities and also I can't measure them. Now, I can't measure them by ruler, of course. So, through two distinct or three sorry two different points one and only one line can pass now let's move to the second one second table i have here semi lines now what the meaning of semi lines let's talk here uh, let's take here two examples ax and bu 
Now look at the first extremity, A. What do you notice about A? I have point A, fixed point A. It has limits, right? It is limited right here, okay? Now, at the first extremity, it has a limit. It is limited. While at the other extremity, X, it has no limit. Okay, it is unlimited here. So now, do you know what I call A? A is the origin of this semi-line. Okay, so A is the origin. Now, what about the notation? Please pay attention. I will start by by opening a bracket okay what the meaning of a bracket bracket represents the limited point okay where is my limited point a is my li limited point so i open the bracket toward a bracket a x x is my second extremity so my first extremity is a my second extremity is x now here I will put a parenthesis Y because it is unlimited right here. Okay, so from now the semi line has two extremities. The first one is limited while the second one is unlimited. Okay, the limited extremity uh, is called origin. Okay, I call it origin. Is it clear? Now let's move to the second example here. I have second semi-line BU now where is my fixed uh, extremity my that that has limit B right so what I call B B is my origin so B is my origin it is uh, fixed it has limit right here while U is unlimited the other extremity is unlimited now, how, what about the notation? Again, a bracket. My limited extremity or my origin here after the bracket. B, then U, then parenthesis. Here, my limited extremity. And here, my unlimited extremity. B is the origin. Okay, now the semi-line has one limited extremity and the other extremity is unlimited. While the line, both extremities are unlimited, okay? Now let's move to the third one, which is the segment, okay? Now look here, miss. I have two points, E and F. Both points are fixed. Here I have, I have limit, and here also I have limit. So the both points are limited, okay? E and F, limited points okay what do i call eif eif are my extremities here okay so e i and f are my extremities now can we measure e and f do they have measurement yes i can get ruler and measure e and f because they are fixed okay i can't elongate f anymore and e they are fixed okay when i have two fixed and limited point I can measure the segment. I call it segment. Unlike the line. The line has no measurement and also has um, has no limits. While here, if I have two fixed points, I call it what? Segment. So EF uh, uh, is a segment. Now, what's about notation? I open the bracket toward E. Then F. I close it with also bracket because they are limited. Okay, when I have limited point, I must use a bracket. Also, I can start from the right to the left, FE, also between two brackets. So E and F are the extremities. Also, E, F is the length. I can measure them. Okay, it has a length, right? Now, let's move to practice one on page 24. Okay, M, N, and P are three given points. Okay, so I have three different points, M, N, and P. How many lines can be drawn only by using these three points? 
So miss by joining two different points, okay? As we mentioned before, I only can draw how many line? Only one line. So for example, by by joining M with N, I will get only one point, one line, okay? So here is my first line, M N. Now, where is my second line? It's N P by joining the point N with the second point P, I will get the second line. Also, if I join P with M, I will get my third line. So, how many lines do I obtain? Obtain three lines, one, two, and three. So the answer will be, there is three lines, M, N, N, P, and P, M. Miss, don't forget to put them between two parentheses because they are unlimited they are lines okay this is my first line this is my second line and this is my third line I must put it between two parentheses because they have no limit let's move to activity B on page 25 it's about collinear points now I will start with the question number one look I have three different points A B and C. They ask me to draw the line AC. So I have to draw a line by joining A with C. Let's draw it. So this is my line AC. Does this line pass through, po through the point B? Look at this line. Does it pass through B? Of course it does. So the answer is yes. The line AC passes through B. Now, if I have points, if the point my points are located on the same line, I call them collinear points. So A, B, and C are collinear points because they are located on the same line. Now let's move to question number two. Here also I have three different points, E, F, and G. They ask me to draw the line E, G. So I join the first line E with G. And I will obtain this uh, line. I draw this line E, G. Now, does this line pass through the point F? Does it pass through F? Of course, it doesn't. So the answer is no. Now, F. E and G, are these three point collinear points? Are they collinear? No, they aren't. Why? Because they aren't located on the same line. F isn't on the same line as E, G. So they aren't collinear points. Now, the points are collinear if they are located on the same line as the first example. If A, B, and C locate at the same line, I call them collinear point. While if they aren't on the same line, they aren't collinear. Your agenda is to study page 24 and 25. Thank you, my lovely students.